Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the third Transatlantic Technology and Training Alliance online event. I'm Inigo Rectari, I'm the director of the International Department of Technica, and I'll be your host once more. Today we are going to talk about advanced manufacturing, and we'll do that with three speakers. We'll do that with Michael McLean, uh, Jeffrey Clay, and Unai Solo. They, the three speakers, have at least two things in common. They are all experts in vocational education and training, and they are all experts in advanced manufacturing as well. So, hi guys, how are you doing? Hello, Fine. how are you? Hello, Kaisho. Fine, so everything's running great. So we'll be back with you in a couple of minutes, okay? So as I was saying today, we are going to talk about advanced manufacturing. And advanced manufacturing is the, is the use of knowledge and innovative technologies to produce complex products. So robotics, 3D printing, additive manufacturing, artificial intelligence, data-driven uh, data processes, hyperconnectivity, and many other things are all important elements in advanced manufacturing. And apart from that, advanced manufacturing is a very strong asset in American and European economies. It is an important driver of employment and prosperity. And it also plays a key role in research and innovation. So this sector accounts for millions of enterprises. It accounts for billions of dollars and, and euros of uh, gross value added and millions of jobs. But today, the question is, what is the vocational education and training doing in advanced manufacturing? And to discuss, to discuss this issue, we have these three speakers with us. We have two speakers from the United States and one European speaker from the past country. And we'll start with the American speakers. So first, we have with us Michael McLean and Jeffrey Clyde. Jeffrey uh, Clyde, sorry. Michael McLean is the Associate Vice President for Industrial and Engineering Technologies, and he provides oversight and leadership for the Automotive Technology Program, Building Construction and Trades Programs, Industrial Maintenance and Mechatronics Technology Programs, Electrical and Computer Engineering Technology Programs, Mechanical Engineering Technology, CNC Machining Technology, Media Production Technology, and Welding Technology. Mr. McLean has served in multiple roles at York Technical College in the United States for over 20 years. And as a faculty member, of course, and as a member of the leadership team for the college. We have with us as well Jeffrey Clade. He's the department chair for the Industrial Maintenance and Mechatronics Technology Department at York Technical College. And he has over 38 years of experience in the industrial field, and he's been teaching at the college for over 24 years. He holds two degrees, majoring in industrial technologies and electronic engineering technology, and he is the co-author of two published books on industrial maintenance and electronic variable speed drives. He also holds a master electrical contractor's license in the state of South Carolina, and he's also a certified NC3 instructor and has received his Siemens Level 1 certification as well. So, Michael and Jeffrey, whenever you want, the floor is all yours. Well, hello, everyone. I'd like to say good morning to some and good afternoon to others. It definitely is a delight to be a part of this conference today. Um, we're delighted to talk to you a little about what we're doing here in the um, United States as it relates to advanced manufacturing. Uh, one of the things that we are seeing um, tremendous growth in is uh, our manufacturing sector, more so with advanced technologies in CNC machining applications and automation and robotics and so forth. Um, so with that said, the college has taken on uh, many different avenues to try and train a workforce suitable to meet the needs of our industry. And with that, we've um, 
partnered with our K through 12 school systems uh, to create uh, dual pathways, what we call dual enrollment for those students training in the high schools so that they can transition into college and even into the workforce along with a series of different types of apprenticeship programs, working with our industry partners um, to help train workforces that are specifically needed for them. And our newest endeavor is uh, junior apprentice programs, where now we uh, are working with our industry partners to actually recruit students in the high schools that are typically two years from their graduating year of high school and they are going to work in these industries along with coming to the York Technical College to gain training in these advanced manufacturing fields. And what that training that they're getting at the college does for them is actually twofold. It actually applies toward their high school graduation, but also applies towards and gives them a leg up in their um, college endeavor and transition as well. So those are some of the things that we are doing. And Mr. Clegg is going to talk to us uh, specifically about some of the training that he's doing in his area and how he's utilizing newer technology to train for our up and coming workforce, as well as our existing workforce. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Clegg. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, glad to be here again. Thank you for having us. Um, as he mentioned, we are presenting from York Technical College specifically. Uh, wanted to show you kind of where we're located in the United States, South Carolina, as indicated here. And uh, we are a part of a 16 technical college system, uh, 16 technical colleges in the South Carolina technical college system. Um, so uh, with that being said, our location is specifically in uh, Rock Hill, South Carolina. Um, with that, uh, the question would be, how do we address the industry needs and training concerning uh, advanced manufacturing? So we have two programs here specifically that address that very closely, and that's mechatronics technology and industrial maintenance technology. One of the neat things about what we do here at York Technical College and, and, and the way the technical college system is um, operates. It actually distributes counties throughout the state. Certain counties uh, will become a service area for a particular college. Our uh, service area includes York, Chester, and Lancaster counties in the upstate of South Carolina. Uh, we have over 200 manufacturing plants in those three counties. Uh, these are just a sampling. As you well know, we couldn't put all 200 of them up here, but uh, very well-known companies, international uh, all over from all over the world are here. And so we have a responsibility to uh, meet the demand of these companies. Um, they have a different range of uh, manufacturing products. So we don't know where our students are gonna go. So we have to prepare them for whatever it is they may run into. Uh, with that being said, that really does put a challenge on us and how we meet those needs. So those needs can be met through uh, credit training. Again, we have degrees and diplomas um, in the credit side of the college, and that would be under my umbrella in the industrial maintenance uh, department. And then we have apprenticeship programs. We have wonderful working relationships with our industry partners to where um, you know, they bring their, their employees through our curricula. And sometimes that might be uh, credit, it might be some other offering. And then we have in those apprenticeship programs, they could be high school post-secondary. If they're high school apprentices, they'll uh, more than likely be coming through a dual enrollment program. And not all apprentices will be in the dual enrollment program, uh, nor will all dual enrollment students be in an apprenticeship program. But that would be a third way that we can reach out to um, provide more people for the workforce that's needed. Also, we have workforce and economic development training. We work hand in hand with them and, and try to provide assistance where needed to get that training that is needed for uh, corporate America here in these three uh, counties. Uh, our department, we have particularly uh, three certificates, two diplomas and two degrees. Uh, the neat part about the way we've done this, the, all of these credentials are stackable. So a student can come in and begin uh, their training and what they do for a particular certificate or diploma may uh, and will be applied towards uh, degrees. So it's a, it's a nice fluid flow to where they get their training. 
How do we prepare our students? Well, we start at the beginning by building a solid foundation. We all know the, you know, the story, you don't build a house on sand. So what we do is we got to provide a good solid foundation for our students to build upon. And we start doing that by teaching the fundamentals and theories. Um, one of the things we didn't do uh, as recently as about uh, six years ago, we did something different. We, got, we put our students through the electrical training first, and then they went through their mechanical training in the latter part of their um, credential. Uh, we found that when the students were going through that, that they kind of lost some of the electrical. So now what we do is the electrical and mechanical concepts simultaneous throughout the whole program. So they're reinforcing both concepts uh, and throughout the entire degree. Um, also, once they get their theory, uh, we're also gonna start teaching them how to do some wiring, hands-on controls, uh, teach them about motors and machines and transformers and electrical systems and uh, electronic variable speed drives as well. So these are just part of their fundamental theories that they're gonna build upon when they get into the advanced manufacturing components. Also, we'll teach them fluid power systems, the hydraulics, pneumatics, everybody understands that's a must and a requirement. Again, we're just considering that as a fundamental, along with mechanical power application where they learn lubrication, power transmission techniques, alignment, uh, that would be both manual and with laser. And we also teach uh, vibration analysis as well. Once that foundation is uh, laid, then what we do is uh, we start focusing on the the programming, again, we're trying to train technicians. We're not trying to train engineers. Uh, however, we have a gap out there with uh, all different skill levels that are required. So we try to reach as far as we can. And we do know that this is uh, a high demand for students that can be able to understand, read, and or write programming code for different types of controllers. Again, with as many different industries that we have available to us here in this service area, we want to be able to make sure our students are ready for any one of those. So as you can see, we teach uh, Allen Bradley technology, Siemens technology, and Quayo technology. Uh, programming integration then comes once they get past that program, the, the basics of programming uh, PLCs and PACs. Uh, when we get them into the programming integration stage, now what we're doing, the, these trainers that you see in this photograph are uh, trainers that we actually built in-house. And what we do is we, we start teaching them about uh, the network and how the data is moved across the network from one controller to another. Now, what you don't see in this photograph is we actually have 12 of these units and they would simulate different manufacturing lines. And so we basically have control data and production data and, and analog data from sensors and field de sensing devices that are transmitted across the subnet and can be picked up by any one of the controllers on any one of the machines. So we start to teach the programming component here to where they can start interfacing and control these devices through the ethernet instead of actually having to wire the actual inputs and outputs uh, locally. We also do teach them the local and remote control. Next component that they need to learn is the robotics, of course. So we do again teach them how to um, teach the positions, write the code, uh, put in the subroutines, call the functions, uh, all of the necessary steps of writing uh, the, the necessary programs. We actually have robots that are on an assembly system. And so our students will actually get the exposure of writing the code that's necessary to perform the production needs on that system. So it's a real world environment that we're putting them into. And we do have a variety of robots. Uh, we are in the process of trying to upgrade in this area though, because there are some newer technologies we'd like to include. So we do well with what we have and are hopeful for the future that we can move on into the newest technologies as well. After we go through all that programming, then we introduce them to the industrial automated manufacturing systems that we have here at the college. Uh, here we teach the system integration uh, through industrial protocols and networking, all those things that are present on that system. This particular system that you're looking at right here is one of our uh, lower technology systems. This does not have industry 4.0 on it. However, it does have a, a, an, an enclosed network system on it that all of the controllers are, are handing information to the master controller and decisions are being made uh, and passed back and forth from one controller to the next. So we do try to get those concepts of industrial protocol. We start off with the serial protocols. Um, they have already been exposed to some of the ethernet protocols when we did the integration. So uh, this would be diving off into some of those other types of uh, industrial protocols like DeviceNet, Profibus, 
uh, control net, things of that nature. We have another system. It's a process control trainer that uh, we are actually modifying. We bought a little kit and then uh, we integrated um, some automated controls for the closed loop and also some manual controls for the open loop. And uh, we have our statistical data gathering that can be done here and we can teach uh, process control on this. Uh, we are in the process. And the reason you see a big frame back there is we're getting ready to put a controller on this, a PLC. And then we are going to actually put that on our network so we can run this from a remote location. Another one of our systems is the CP uh, factory. It's our cyber physical factory. It's uh, made by Festo. Very proud of this machine. It is an industry 4.0 machine. Um, the concepts on this are, are a few years old, but uh, we were very proud to receive this machine. It's one of the first, it's actually one of the first ones in North America. And so uh, it's been very helpful in teaching industry 4.0 concepts. Another system that we have is our uh, modular production system, our Festo MPS 404. Uh, this is a fairly new machine. Uh, we received this not too long ago. It's uh, actually part of a, a program that we received a, a grant through the state of South Carolina, a partnership with Siemens. So we're very for fortunate to uh, have this machine. It does go into higher level. And we'll discuss that in just a minute. Once we uh, teach them those systems and kind of give them an overview on them, then uh, one of the things we do is we start focusing on assembly and reassembly, disassembly and reassembly, I'm sorry. Also, you know, how to realign if they have to move the machine, add to it, take away uh, the network connections that are needed to put the system back in service. So we will actually disassemble this uh, FMS 200 that I showed you earlier, uh, completely disassemble it. They have to rebuild it. We give them the amount of time they need to do that. Once they understand those concepts, uh, then we go into uh, system troubleshooting. <laughs> we break it, they fix it. So we teach them two different models that they should be using as they're uh, doing their uh, troubleshooting. And uh, one is the critical thinking model that uh, we use here at the college. Uh, and the other one is the common and well-known system, uh, systems approach to troubleshooting. And it's a Siemens uh, curricular or platform. Anybody that goes through the level one will receive this training. So we get them out there on the integrated systems and we start uh, teaching them how to troubleshoot. We give them the blueprints. We put uh, faults in the machine. We have all different types of faults that might be mechanical, electrical, pneumatic, um, whatever it may be. And we have them diagnose it with their resources that are available, including using the PLC programming uh, to diagnose as well. Next level, we teach them the industry 4.0 concepts. We start off at the fundamental level. And then we move up to the applied industry 4.0 concepts. Uh, in the mechatronics program, we go even a little further. We go deeper into the industry 4.0 manufacturing systems that I showed you earlier. Um, the newer system that I showed you, the MPS 404, actually we have some, uh, some light or mini ERP um, concepts that are embedded in this process. We have MES, of course, STATA, all the different components to the automation pyramid. We also have the RFID on both of our industry 4.0 machines. Uh, the newer one that I was referring to earlier has a web shop. You can actually, it's just like Amazon. You can actually order the products from a web uh, web page. And then of course, all of that data is popped into the, uh, populated into the ERP, which is handed down to the MES, which handles manufacturing. We use the internet of things. And we also have augmented reality on this system that we use. So just an example of that um, is the neatest concept. We actually just got this working not too long ago. So the picture on the upper right is what the machine looks like when you're looking at it with your eyes and the machine picture, the photograph that you see on the lower left, that is after we have actually logged in with our Internet of Things device, whatever that may be, and we have actually linked to the machine. We now have AR capability. So uh, it's, it's really neat to get the documentation and the stats and everything off the machine from this, uh, this tool. Next thing that we have is that the students, as they go through the program, they will receive professional certifications, uh, NC3. So they're going to get the fundamentals of Industry 4.0. We are trying to finish our acquiring of the Festo Applied Certification for Applied Industry 4.0. Uh, we are also currently trying to finish up our uh, credentialing for the Siemens Level 1 and the Siemens Level 2. 
And so throughout this whole thing, we try to keep look for ways to improve. We monitor our data points to ensure that our students are successful and that industry keeps coming back for more of our students. So we have very strong success rates throughout our program. We have some of the strongest in the college and we're very proud of that. We think we're on target, especially with feedback from industry. So thank you for your time. I hope this has been helpful. This is my contact information. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. That's pretty impressive. And it was a very complete presentation covering, I think, all aspects. So yeah, as he was saying, if you've got any questions, please write them in the chat so that I can read them and then I can ask them to the speakers. We'll go now to the other side of the Atlantic, to Europe, to uh, Miguel Altuna Bet Center in the Basque Country to talk with uh, Unai Tiarzolo. And then I'll ask you some questions to the three of you. Okay, so uh, Unai is a mechanical engineer. He's a senior project man man manager at Miguel Altuna Bet Center in the Basque Country. He's responsible for research and innovation at the Advanced Manufacturing Department, and he worked at Technica, the Basque Applied Research Center in Vocational Education and Training between 2005 and 2013. As a project manager at Mechanical, at mechanical Manufacturing Area, and he has led many collaborative projects among vet centers and companies in the Basque Country. He collaborates with a number of industrial and academic associations of metal forming and the international cold forging group. Currently, he's working on the excellent Advanced Manufacturing 4.0 project. It's, it's a platform of centers of vocational excellence and uh, also in smart pet center workshops in 4.0 labs both led by Technica. And uh, he also represents Technica as a technical advisor in several networks, such as the European Forum of Vocational Education and Training, FBET, in the Industry 4.0 thematic team, in the World Federation of Colleges and Polytechnics. He's the co-leader of the Applied Research in VET Affinity Group. And in UNESCO Univoc, he's working in the digitalization work stream of the BUILD project. So, Unai, whenever you want, the floor is all yours for your presentation. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Unai Ciarzolo. I'm project manager at Miguel Altuna Vocational Center, and I will explain to you how we are working with advanced manufacturing here at Miguel Altuna. So first of all, the agenda of my presentation. Uh, first, I will explain, I will give some information, some general information about the center, and then after talking about the characteristics of the uh, training centers in the 21th century, uh, I will uh, shortly explain our uh, study programs and finally I will go into advanced manufacturing at Miguel Altuna. So, uh, as you see here, we are located in the north part of Spain, in the Basque Country, in a, in a town called Bergara. Uh, we are a small town but uh, surrounded by a lot of industry and um, this center in particular is the is an, is integrated in the network of birth centers in the Basque Country and collaborated with Technica. Uh, it was funded in 1928 and uh, recently in 2019 we, uh, we moved to these new facilities uh, here. Uh, we are currently 625 students at initial training and a staff of uh, 85 uh, people. And we have a yearly reskilling and upskilling activities of around 525 trained people and with a number of collaboration with 150 enterprises, mostly SMEs, with whom we collaborate in worldwide learning, dual systems and applied research. Uh, what we see in this new era of uh, digital transformation is that uh, we are having 
a greater requirement of qualification and specialization of the competences of our students. We are moving in a very digitalized environment, both in the production systems but and also in the learning environment. And so this requires a capacity of adaptation and flexibility of the students. And uh, also we must take into account that before COVID, but also now we are uh, living in a globalized uh, world and hope, hopefully uh, with a higher mobility in the near future. So everything brings to new ways of learning, to the necessity of new ways of learning. In Miguel Altuna, we have uh, we are a, a hybrid center with uh, uh, almost all our study programs are very industrial. Uh, you can see there that we have five uh, programs for high level and another uh, three for medium level and two specialization programs. So uh, everything that is happening here it moves around what is going on in industry. Uh, to focus here in this slide, we are uh, newly opening a new specialization program for smart manufacturing, which is a specific program to update uh, our curriculums to the needs of industry. Uh, also to mention that uh, besides training, uh, we also, our bed system is combined bed system, the Basque Country, and we work with innovation, technology, research and methodological innovation and also another main pillar is the entrepreneurship and everything uh, works thanks to the alliances, collaborations and internationalization. So being said that, uh, I will talk a bit further about how we are dealing with advanced manufacturing at Miguel Altuna. So we are committed to build a strong regional skill ecosystem that brings together best centers, companies, research and development centers, universities, policymakers and individuals uh, as a response to changes coming from the digital transformation. Uh, what we have seen in industry is that in a very short period of time, Industry 4.0 enabled technologies are being implemented in companies following different strategies and in different speeds. But uh, all, of, all this is bringing uh, some key features that are changing the roles, the games roles, games rules. So this is, these are interoperability or horizontal and vertical integration. Uh, high flexibility in production is needed. So everything is modular, smart, it's tended to be modular and smart. Connectivity is uh, reaching uh, high levels of, of uh, in implementation it's from production to logistic. Uh, production chains are tended to be mass custom customized. Everything is uh, data driven and uh, finally uh, different uh, disciplines and technologies are working together. So all these changes in the industry are need to be implemented also in our bed system. So what we are foreseeing here is that we need an adaptation to that, to the, in that direction. For that we are, we are building what is called the centers of vocational excellence and in, the, in this case in advanced manufacturing. So here we believe that bed centers we must, must have a cutting edge technology here inside the, the schools, machines, equipment, robots, assembly lines, everything as much as possible and as close as what is going on in industry, uh, knowing that high invested investments are needed. Secondly, uh, the features of Industry 4.0 in industry must be implemented also here in Vocational Education Labs. So we need to have the capacity to integrate these new technologies in our skill, in our, our staff's skills. So teachers and trainers must be up, up skills very fast. And then uh, we need to create new trainings very fast and we need to upgrade our programs very fast. 
This is uh, because uh, we can't uh, stay waiting and time is, the, time is a key factor here again. And finally, we need to collaborate among VEC centers. To show you uh, a bit more about how we are working, I will put a, a video uh, where you will see our facilities, our labs, and you will understand a bit more which is our approach for implementation of advanced manufacturing at Miguel Altuna. The Advanced Manufacturing 4.0 Lab at Miguel Altuna, in the Basque Country, Spain, is a physical space for digital learning. Students and teachers work in the lab to explore the challenges presented by Industry 4.0. Functional digital classroom helps develop in-company technologies and working habits of the school. The establishment of the 4.0 concept in the lab allows us to manage and store data to monitor students' performance and track information. The Advanced Manufacturing 4.0 Lab at Miguel Altuna has the same level of digital maturity as industrial production facilities. By learning in a professional setting, students experience a smoother transition to the workplace. Ikastetxean erronketako metodologia erabiltzen dugu eta enpresetako errealitatea lantzen dugu. Tailerrean RFID txartet personalek erabiltzen ditugu makinak eta erramientak errezerbatzeko. Baldi berean behar ditugun plano eta dokumentuak Makinetako ordenagailuetan ditugu. Sistema honekin, ingurune digital baten lan egiten ikasten dugu. The lab is a showroom and test space for small and medium enterprises. Here in Metanaro, we are developing some new projects regarding Industry 4.0 topics, and our close relationship with Miguel Altuna has been really helpful as their work is truly inspiring and an example of best practice. Miguel Altuna's Advanced Manufacturing 4.0 Lab is part of the Exam 4.0 Knowledge Community. Exam 4.0 is the European platform of vocational excellence centers in advanced manufacturing. At Miguel Altuna, we pilot advanced manufacturing lab concepts for vocational education and training centers. Our results are shared with other centers around Europe. So as you have seen in this video, uh, here at Miguel Altuna, we are implementing uh, as much as key enable technologies as possible in our labs in order to, to, to get a very di digitalized environment where students get used to work on this environment from the very beginning, from the, their learning processes. And also we, what we want to get is that they use their own data to improve their learning processes. Uh, this, this is very linked with the learning factory uh, concept. A learning factory, it's a, uh, conceptually, it's something that's quite used in, in some countries in, around Europe. 
Uh, it's a learning environment where processes and technologies are based on real industrial site, which allows a direct approach to product uh, creation process. So, learning factors are based on didactical concept, emphasizing experimental and problem-based learning. The continuous improvement fi philosophy is facilitated by own actions and integrated involvement of the participant. So this is what we want to get here at Miguel Altuna. Uh, we are producing, we have everything organized as a production line and we are producing a product and in this process students are learning. So this is the, the approach as, as we are facing this learning factory. So as you see here, we have a, a standard process where a product is designed. Uh, there is a process engineering and production manufacturing execution and also an assembly stage. And in each of those stages, we are implementing these key enabled technologies. So for instance, we have PLM simulations, virtual and uh, uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, robotics, and many other features that we try to implement in each of the stages. So students not only uh, learn how to produce a part, but also they produce this part using these technologies. So we also work in data analytics, cybersecurity, and many other concepts related to Industry 4.0. I cannot for, uh, forgot to mention that uh, all this is linked with a competence and a skills that we want to, to get. So this, there is a competence framework behind this uh, approach. Uh, here you can see some of the some pictures of our center. You can see that we are trying that uh, having all cutting edge uh, facilities, uh, bringing all this technology and getting students used to, to work there. And finally, as a conclusion, uh, I would say that our approach to reach the goal of an efficient learning and teaching process in advanced manufacturing, on the one hand, cutting edge technologies and labs are needed. We need to have this, these facilities as much as possible here. Uh, Hands-on trainings uh, will assure the competences requested by industry because it's not only learning a technology, but it's also learning how to deal with this technology in a real environment. So uh, all these aspects request a competence and technology framework ad ad adaptation. So all programs need to be uh, updated, as I said. And another key aspect is the trainers and teachers upskilling programs. And finally, uh, all, all this will happen only if collaboration is, is, uh, is taken as, a, as an everyday <coughs> function because collaboration is a key factor here to collaborate with other centers and also with industry and other stakeholders. And that's all from my side. If there is any questions, I open to answer all of that. Okay, so thank you very much, Unai, for your presentation and for showing us what you are doing in your pet center in Miguel Altuna in Vergara. And we actually have three questions for you. The first one was asked by Mr. Oyer Aranzabal from Usurville Vet Center in the Basque Country. And he's asking, I guess it was for the, for, uh, for the American speakers, but anyway, you can answer the question, the three of you. So the first question was, with what goal are you using RFID technologies? Well, we'll go ahead and uh, just jump in there real quick on that. We have uh, two of our systems that has RFID technology to track the production, uh, the quality, all of the data that is put into the production of that part on both of those machines, the CP factory, as well as the NPS uh, 404 system. Um, that RFID chip is actually embedded on the product on one of the machines, and the chip is embedded on the pallet 
and the carrier on the other machine. Uh, all of that data is also uh, sent to the digital twin. Uh, it's mapped onto the uh, product at every station of, of manufacturing, every part of the manufacturing and monitored in the MES as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. Do you want to answer the question as well, Unai? Or do you prefer me to move to the next one? Uh, uh, I think um, Oyer knows very well what are we using the RFID for. So, uh, we have similar examples for the robotic and automatization modules in in uh, automatization and robotics uh, programs, uh, but we are also using RFID to track people and machine use use and tool tools on the machines and so on. So, so yes, we are trying to to use it as widely as possible, because yeah, it's a, it's a, yeah, okay, something that is coming now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Nay. Now, the next question is related to, yeah, to technology and investment at the same time. So we've been seeing that in both bed centers, you, are, you have pretty well equipped labs. So you've invested a great deal of money in, in these technologies. And I was wondering, thinking about the future of advanced manufacturing industry, what do you think will be the most relevant technology. So what would you say, this is what I think it's coming? <laughs> I think one, and I appreciate the question. It's, it's a challenging question. Um, not one I've really put much time into, but it's, it's a definitely a relevant thought. Um, I, I see us moving into moving away from basically the local manufacturing platform, um, moving into more of a, a globalized type of information sharing. Um, I can see satellites and all this stuff with the logistics going on. Uh, there, there's a, a massive amount of growth. We also know that there's a lot of experiment and also developments in, in research and development with the AI. I start to see some of that being integrated into our manufacturing capabilities as well, which is going to greatly enhance uh, the need for more specialized training and more in-depth knowledge of how uh, the data is transferred, you know, globally on a, on a larger scale. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll chime in there too, just thinking about what uh, JC just mentioned and what we are seeing even with some of our uh, newer industries moving into the areas, um, they are transitioning away from such large inundated manufacturing companies and they're creating more of uh, a many uh, manufacturing companies. Um, and so taking advantage of the globalization and being able to produce certain products here and other products in, in, in other areas. And so what we're seeing is that the footprint of some of the manufacturing factories are not as large um, as they've normally been uh, simply because technology has allowed them to diversify um, throughout a region or even throughout uh, the world. Mm -hmm. I uh, don't know if if I if I would add something to the comments. Uh, I would say that for me, more than a technology, is a is needed a mindset mindset change, a cult cultural change in at all levels, uh, both in training and also in many companies, because uh, digital transformation is bringing. Uh, not only one technology, but a mix of a lot of technologies. And as I, I said uh, in my presentation, we are talking about modularity, flexibility, flexibility, data driving everything. So uh, we need to change our minds and to start thinking how is the new, how, which are the new forms of working there. So, so yeah, it's not one, but a lot of them. Okay. So, Thank you very much for your answers and thank you very much for taking part in, in this event and for taking your time to present to our audience your activities. 
it, it has been a pleasure for me to share this event with you, and I hope to see you again soon. And now we are reaching the last part of our session, and in this part we are going to, to share or to show the student activity, or sorry, the activities that you've been uploading to your YouTube channels. So we received 14 activities from 11 different vet centers, and I will mention them and go through them in a presentation, and all of them have been uploaded in our YouTube channel, in the Transatlantic Technology and Training Alliance YouTube channel, and they'll be available for you to see the whole playlist. So I will, okay, that's working. Okay, so the first one we received is from EUXIT. It's a pet center in, in, in Denmark, in the north of Europe. And they sent us a video about a frame in CNC machine. The next one is by the same vet center as well, and it's also about a CNC, but this time it's a machine setting. Then we, ha we have another video from Miguel Altuna, and yeah, Unai has been just presenting some minutes ago, but they are sharing a video about their advanced manufacturing 4.0 lab with the ERP production, workshop, raw material, tool storage, and automatic machining, etc. We've got another video from the same center. This time is the Advanced Manufacturing 4.0 Lab as well. Okay, then we received another video from Vidasoa. This is a vet center in the Basque Country, close to the French border. And they sent us a video about their mechanical manufacturing workshop with a description, the use of the ERP, the raw material, tool storage, automatic machining, etc. We received as well a video from Usur Bilgo Lambide Escola. Well, actually, the last webinar, the one dealing with healthcare and, and energy, was broadcasted from their facilities. So this time they are sending us a video about a collaborative robot in CNC cutting saw. Then we received another video from FP Andramari, from Andramari Lambide Siketa in Galdacau, close to Bilbao about uh, electromechanical maintenance machinery and workshop in Andramari. We've got another video from Mendizabala Vet Center. This is a vet center in, in Vitoria, in Gasteiz, uh, one of the main cities of the Basque Country in, in Alaba. And they've shared with us a video about production programming in mechanical manufacturing course description. We've got another video by the same school, and this is a design in mechanical manufacturing course description. We also received a video from Armeria, Armeria Escola from Eibar in the Basque Country as well, about parallel cam-driven indexer. And this video shows mechanical manufacturing students' activity to create a parallel cam-driven indexer from design to manufacturing and further assembly and setup. We have another video from AEG. This is a school in San Sebastian, one of the most beautiful cities in the Basque Country. And it's about a Balab factory, innovation factory for the fashion manufacturing industry, covering all the processes from design materials to industrial pattern design and production without forgetting commercialization. We have a video from Don Bosco in Renteria about a Montessori box challenge. It is an industrial mechatronics challenge to design a set that would make Montessori toys. We've got a video from Tolas Aldea, how to design a, a, manufacture, a manufacture gearbox. This is industrial mechatronics students challenge to design a set that would make Montessori toys as well. And we've got a video from EASO. This is a vet center in San Sebastian as well. And they present their machining courses, the uh, middle degree uh, machining course. And as I was saying, all these videos will be uploaded to our YouTube channel, to the Transatlantic Technology and Training Alliance YouTube channel. The whole recording of the event will be uploaded as well. As you know, we got some technical issues, so if you want to see the, the whole recording, you'll find it there. Uh, of course, I cannot leave without thanking you, thanking, of course, the speaker for, 
for the speakers for taking the, their time to present their activities, but also to all of you that have been sending all these videos and uploading them to the YouTube channel. And yeah, that's all from my side. I just want to say all the best, take care, enjoy the rest of the day, and see you soon.